What does it mean to pull out all the stops? When a person passes the buck, what is he or she doing? What connection does the phrase have with a knife? Who was famous for the slogan, the buck stops here? All this and more in this video, do watch. But first, please subscribe to The English Nut on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook and Twitter. Thanks. To pull out all the stops means to do everything possible to achieve something, to put in maximum effort, to hold nothing back, to employ the best possible resources, to spare no expense, to do whatever it takes to make something happen. Here are some examples of its usage. The police pulled out all the stops to find the missing child. Kapil pulled out the stops to make his son's birthday party a memorable one. The director said he would pull out all the stops to make the movie a success. Luella decided to pull out the stops to do well in her exams. The new production of Macbeth pulls out all the theatrical stops. As you can see from a couple of the examples, you can drop the word all while using the phrase. You can also use an adjective before stops such as theatrical in the last sentence. The term comes from the playing of pipe organs. These musical instruments have stops that control the airflow. If you pull out a stop, the volume of the music increases. If you pull out all the stops, you get the maximum possible musical volume. The result is a full and thrilling sound. Because of the magnificent sound they can produce, organs have traditionally been used in churches to play sacred music. It is challenging to play an organ. The musician has to play the keyboards with his fingers while operating the pedal board with his feet and he has to take his hands off the keyboard to regulate the stops. The earliest figurative use of the pulling out the stops phrase in a slightly different form from its current avatar is by English poet and cultural critic Matthew Arnold. In his Essays in Criticism, published in 1865, he writes, Knowing how unpopular a task one is undertaking, when one tries to pull out a few more stops in that somewhat narrow-toned organ, the modern Englishman. Judging from this description, Arnold didn't think too highly of his fellow Englishmen. Here's an example of the literal usage of the phrase from the same year as Arnold's essays. It is from an article published in the Daily News of London describing a banquet that took place in the town hall of Birmingham, Warwickshire. Such was the clatter of tongues, it was indeed a very babel. Some idea of the power of the organs of speech after dinner may be formed when I say that the enormous organ of the hall was absolutely drowned at times in the storm of chatter that filled the hall. Poor Mr. Stimson, the organist, had to revenge himself for the loss of all his fine piano passages by pulling out all the stops and firing a concentrated broadside of all the tears of his diapason. To pass the buck is to shift responsibility or blame from yourself to someone else. It's to leave a difficult problem for someone else to solve, to put an unpleasant task that you should be doing on someone else's plate, to claim that the unpleasant task does not come under your jurisdiction. Here are some examples of its usage. Zenith took the credit when things went well, but passed the buck when things went wrong. I'm sick of Arun passing the buck whenever there's a mess to be sorted out. During the meeting, the parents passed the buck to the teachers. You broke it, you fix it. Don't try to pass the buck. The idiom originates in the game of poker. This card game became popular in America in the latter half of the 19th century. This was the era of the Wild West and players were often suspicious of each other. An accusation of dirty dealing could escalate into a shootout, so it was in everyone's interest to keep the game clean. To avoid cheating, the rules dictated that different players deal the cards by turn. A marker was used to indicate whose turn it was to deal. The marker was often a knife with a buckhorn handle, so it came to be known as the buck. Whenever it was time to change the dealer, the buck was passed to the next player in line and if that player didn't want to deal, he too passed the buck. Mark Twain used the phrase in his 1872 book Roughing It. I reckon I can't call that hand. Ante and pass the buck. 
This was a literal use of passing the buck in the context of a game of poker. Incidentally, the expression up the ante comes from poker as well. In this game, it refers to raising the amount of money put up at the start of the game. When used idiomatically, it means to increase your risks or demands in order to get a greater advantage. Coming back to the phrase, pass the buck, it was at the beginning of the 20th century that it became an idiom. An early citation is from a 1902 edition of the California newspaper, the Oakland Tribune. When the public or the council pass the buck up to me, I'm going to act. Harry S. Truman, who served as US president from 1945 to 1953, adopted the slogan, the buck stops here. The phrase, a counterpoint to passing the buck, appeared on a sign on his desk. It reflected his belief that he was ultimately responsible for every action of his administration. Don't you wish all leaders took responsibility for what their colleagues did? I pull out all the stops to make my videos worth watching. And if things don't go so well, I don't pass the buck. If you can come up with sentences with these phrases, please write them in the comments section. I'm the English Nut. Bye for now.